Hi everybody. Hi everybody. We have Danny Moon here. Hi Danny. Hi Beth. So Danny is a, a media expert that I interviewed. She's also a good friend of mine and, and she knows a thing or two about podcasting, YouTube, and, and performing for media and doing and Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. Except we can't figure out why this is exciting. But I think it does sound better when it goes like this, Beth. Okay, okay, so I'm going to hold my mic a little closer and talk very softly. I'm also in an echoey room at WeWork. Um, um, so it sounds very Janny and I were, we, yeah, I know. So Janny, um, Janny knows a lot about podcasting, and I was thinking maybe it would be really cool to talk about how to start a podcast, some tips for getting podcast viewers, how to, um, um, one thing I'm curious thing about, I'm curious just about podcasts podcast actually grow business. Actually grow business. So. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I have two uh, just examples right now. So you had Sunday Beam on your show recently, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, her, yeah. One of her podcasts just got to number one on iTunes, and she just got featured in a magazine or a blog. And um, the great thing about that is that it just increases your exposure. So you get more clients, you get more people going to your website. Podcasts are so easy to do. Everybody who has a brand or business should be doing them. It's like 20 minutes of your time and you can record them on your own from your computer on iTunes or any recording device. You can outsource to Fiverr and get someone to do the voice overlay for your intro and outro. I'm a big proponent of Fiverr. Like this is so easy to do and so inexpensive. I was but wondering how your podcast coming out. <laughs> yeah, I'm technologically challenged, as Beth Weinstein knows. I have to ask her about everything, even though yeah, I was like, "How do I even get here?" She she's using some fancy B Live app or technology <laughs> um, to do Facebook Lives, which is awesome. That is true. Um, yeah, Jenny actually produced um, a, a tip. Um, what is it? An audio that I made her put up on YouTube, and she got this voiceover. And like, how did she do that so quickly? It was all within like an hour. <laughs> Fiverr, man, Fiverr is the way to go, and you pay like literally five bucks because you've got all these talented people all over the world, and they have incredible skill sets. They'll do everything, so you can get your podcast ad from Fiverr. You can get the audio outro you could probably even pay someone to upload them every week if you wanted it's so easy but as far as you know are, do i get a return on the podcast you absolutely do just like i gave the example of sunday and then i have another client parajat she's a high risk expert and she did an interview with a well-known celebrity fertility doctor and they've gotten business from it. So another way to get more return is if you do interviews is similar to your summit. Mm -hmm. So the probably way less stressful and way less work. <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, so yeah, I've always wondered how if podcasts really do produce, um, you know, sales or results monetarily or if it's mm -hmm. exposure and, or for fun. Or for fun. It's, it's all of the above. You know, I, I think it's for fun. I think you can have the most fun on a podcast because you don't have the stress of it being on video. If you don't want to, you can really let go and be yourself. You can do interviews and partner with people. You can get business because at every end of the podcast. So here are some things on how to increase listeners you know, how you can get more listeners. I'm going to give you a couple of tips and then I'm going to tell you how you can actually get started on a podcast format. So why don't I do, I mean, which one do I want to do first? Let me do the, let me do the latter first. So you can start off a podcast in a lot of ways. Think of it as a Ted talk. You know, you think of it as have a strong call to action, tell a story and give me some tips and end with a strong call to action. Easy stories and tips, really. That's the gist. And I really encourage people doing podcasts to start off doing it on your own and not doing interviews because you want to learn the skill of how to be entertaining, how to be inspiring, how to be a great teacher. So learn those. Use the interview as a crutch, which so many people do. Um, 
The other thing is, so that's super easy. If you do want to get into interviews later, I think that's great. You can also, you know, mail out to your mailing list to get coaching clients to do live coaching on air. That's super fun and exciting in the moment. And my biggest thing about podcasts, and I had this experience with a client this morning. She was super sick and she was suffering from bronchitis and she has to do this workshop and she's like, I need to do my podcast. What do I do? I'm freaking out. And she wanted to use this other topic. And I was like, look, let's use what's going on with you now. The most like the best content you can use is like what you're experiencing in the moment. So if I am like fighting with employees, use it. There's a lesson there. And in the moment, be vulnerable, share it and tell me how the heck you're going to get out of that situation or fix that situation. It's exciting. It's in the moment. And you're you're dealing with real life issues right then and there. So you don't have to stress about, oh, my God, what am I going to talk about? Use what's going on in your reality. Ah, that's, that's, interesting. that's interesting. So I can talk about um, how I haven't had sugar in three and a half years and it's killing me. <laughs> yeah, that could be totally your podcast for sure. It's yeah. Tied in this. <laughs> Although I, I'm, I mean sugar as in I don't really eat normal sugar, but I, I'm not eating any maple syrup, agave, honey, or anything else that I love so much. And it's, it's not easy, but it's not easy. Getting there. Now, yeah, you could, you could talk about that, Beth, but also, too, like, I know, like, creating this summit has been a lot of work, and you've put in so much time and effort. But even a rough day or something could be about that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like during, during my interview with Janie, we talked Now, even though I'm still freaking out, even though I still say um, and I need to get over that very quickly, and um, and, um there you go, there you go. But I, I spoke about how Jane helped me through this and how her coaching brought me from here to here. I just I have more to go, and so that's interesting. I love that. I love that. I, that actually makes that actually makes me seem a lot more doable. I always thought it was going to be um, a really hard really thing, hard thing to have to go find people, and then it's a huge production. No, it doesn't need to be super. And it can be super few. Like, you're full with your shit in the mud out with everyone listening. And it's awesome. Because it really shows that you're a real expert because you're dealing with it in the moment. With everyone else is probably dealing with something very similar to what you're So that's like a few tips on how, what the content should look like in a podcast. Mm -hmm. Now here are a few things you can do. Like let's say you already have your podcast going. How do you get more people to listen? Well, we already talked about doing interviews and partnerships because they can share it on their social media, et cetera. Um, you can do a, a short Facebook live video and promote your podcast mm. and vice versa. At the end of a podcast, you can offer a free opt-in, a free gift, similar to what you're doing in the summit. Mm -hmm. So that encourages people to uh, want to listen. Uh, obviously sending it out to your newsletter, your mailing list regularly. And something that people forget to do is to recirculate, you know, old content. So if you do, mm -hmm. did a podcast that was, you know, uh, let's say I had a client that did an interview with one of the actresses from that movie. Oh, what's the NASA movie with the women, the smart women? Oh, I know what you're talking about. I don't know the name. <laughs> uh, I just totally forgot about it. Anyway, it's this award-winning, you know, movie. And she interviewed one of the hidden figures. She interviewed one of the daughters and the Oscars came out and she could have then recirculated that podcast and been like, hey, if you missed my interview, here it is. So anything that's timely, you can recirculate anything. It's awesome. Like it's not just like this one time off thing. Yeah, I didn't. I actually didn't know people recirculated blog uh, <laughs> podcasts. I know blog posts. Um, <laughs> I've done that. I talked to people about it. You know what else I've seen, and I'm pretty not sure people do it with podcasts. I've seen YouTubers take their YouTube videos and then just have it transcribed and posted as a blog post. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, that's, you know, SEO. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. If you are doing a podcast, I definitely recommend you put it on Podomatic. Uh, 
iTunes and you can use any, uh, there's like a um, blueberry ways to get analytics. Cause you want to see oh, yeah. numbers are every month. Who's listening. So a lot of them are free or like $5 a month to sign up for the analytics. Oh, I didn't even know there were podcast analytics. That makes sense. I was drilling. I'm like, know your analytics, know your analytics. It's very important. It's important. We forget. Yeah, yeah you uh, want to know if, um, and then eventually if your podcast does really well, you can ask for affiliates, part, you know, uh, partnerships to promote certain products or things on, you know, on your podcast and make a little, you know, cash on the side. Little sad hustle. Like, like bulletproof, making just a little cast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, but my favorite thing that Jenny teaches are these these tips and tricks, um, like colorful things, and, and you know, what are they? Are they ways from one thing to another, which I, I still need to learn. Can you talk a little bit about about the podcast? Podcast. I'm so sorry, Beth. I heard you. I oh. I missed that last line. I know this, I know this. Um, hacks, hacks and tips for people with podcasts or doing videos or even Facebook lives like this, like your colorful lines or, or transitions. Oh, you mean or, like, your, uh, one liners, the one liners? Yeah, that, yeah. The one liners, um, ways to yeah, you know, so have the conversation. This, um, this was part of my free gift that's on yeah. YouTube, um, seven one liners, but there's like endless one liners, yeah, don't get them away lines, <laughs> catchphrases, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, how do you teach charisma? Some people naturally have it, but I believe we all can, can, can access it. But sometimes you have to work from the outside in by giving these like phrases for you to memorize and keep, you know, in the back of your mind. So then you can use them. Now I'm just going to give one of them, you know, uh, is like, you know, the, again, the, um, a client that I was working with this morning, she started off her podcast by saying, I confess I'm sick. I'm like, mm. I don't even want to do this podcast. So just that uh, phrase, I confess um, helps, but these are all one liners that give you a way to sprinkle more color into what you're saying and also help to bring out that charisma and that part of you that's more entertaining that plus it's, it's true authenticity right and that's what people connect with right? Absolutely. And, like i confess if you are being authentic and real you're doing all of these things naturally without even knowing all i have done is just been like you know observed and plucked them out and be like here you go if you just to bring it to your awareness so you can practice and again it's that working outside in but some people naturally have it but then you know if the people that naturally have charisma have other issues they need to work on none of us are perfect by any means exactly now i'm just curious also why podcasts over like youtubing not necessarily over i think you know ideally you should be doing it all i just find that podcasts are the easiest to start with podcasts and Facebook live because YouTube is starting to get more like a legit, it's like a legit, almost like TV station mm -hmm. and people demand higher production value. So it means you need a team of editors and film. Yeah. You know, you know, there's some great stuff on YouTube. I'm like, this is as good as TV. So yeah. if you don't have the money and the resources, start with Facebook lives and podcasts because it's inexpensive to start. It's easy. People don't expect, you know, the bells and whistles and fancy edits on Facebook there. They expect just raw, real, like what we're doing now. And again, podcasts are just super easy. Just mm. music at the top and music at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, I mean, my whole thing is trying to find really good content. No one is doing a podcast about this. I can't believe that. Um, I'm also curious about people doing podcasts by themselves versus, you know, the, the two speakers, like me and you are doing a podcast, let's say. Is there a benefit? That Sorry, I had I, my headset is malfunctioning. <laughs> I had to turn it I know, off. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the ease of Facebook Live. I know I'm echoing. She's malfunctioning. 
And, and, no, I'm curious because I actually thought about this. I have a friend who has all this great information and I was like, we should just do a podcast together. But I wonder about doing it with someone versus doing it alone. Totally. Listen, there's pros and cons to both. It's just like any partnership. The pros to like if you and I were to do a, a podcast together is that there is, there could be a lot more energy. There's interplay. We could joke more and have fun. You know, we're bouncing off of each other. So, of course. Um, but there's also more accountability. Like what if, you know, I'm doing more work or you're doing more work, you know, whatever. You know, there's also issues around, you know, can you have a true co-hosting situation or someone more a sidekick? So ego can get involved. You know, I've seen partnerships split up because it's like, they're the star. I want to be. So it's all the typical stuff that you deal with in working in partnerships. I think the key is the intention. Why are you doing this with a person? Like, you know, like it might make sense for you and I to do a podcast because I'm in media and you're in, you know, helping people build their businesses. So there is a direct tie. Mm -hmm. But if I was a nutritionist, and you were an entrepreneur expert, uh, it doesn't, I don't know. Really yeah. So you all have to have like a common intention and goal. Like the tagline needs to be the same. Like we're helping each other. If we were to say we were helping each, uh, helping people birth their business and be super successful mm -hmm. in the media, that could totally work. Cause you and I yeah. we have that same intention. Yeah. Um, that's really interesting. interesting. Yeah. Doing it by yourself, though, I think is harder, but in the end, it could be more rewarding because you have to learn how to really hold my attention for a certain amount of time, just yourself. And you learn all these skills by doing it. Wow. And that's why people need media coaches, because it's, it's not easy. I mean, those of you that know me in real life know that I actually... I, I'm extroverted. I would say I have charisma. I don't know if I call it, I don't know if it's charisma, but I, I love people and I tend to be very happy and high energy. But on video and, and these Facebook lives and probably even the podcast I did yesterday, it's hard. It's hard to have it come through in the same way because now it's like there's this camera, there's something recording me and wow. And, and now I see the need for media coaches. <laughs> I mean, I, I constantly make this joke. I knew Janie for like, I don't know, three years or something before I understood what it was that she did for a living. <laughs> but oh, no. way. And everybody, everybody listening, everybody needs to know that if you're not doing this now, you have to be doing it soon because it's pretty much the way of the future. And Janie knows all the stats about everybody's watching video, everything's on, you know, video podcast, you know, reading blogs, like, oh, yeah, maybe it drives traffic on a on a Google, but this is kind of the future. And, and it's also a really nice way to connect, like, people get to watch us and see what, you know, I've been hiding behind all these bad photos for years, and people now get to see what I look like in real life. <laughs> it forces you to, to, you know, to make yourself look presentable. Oh, I yeah. would have my onesie right now if I didn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> my hair and makeup. Thanks. I know. Like, I curl my hair now, finally, for the first time in, I don't know, 20 like years. Like <laughs> um, No, this has been really great. I also I had one more quick question. Now I forgot. I think it was, um, oh, uh, what's your number one tip for people getting started podcasting? Like, is it just go do it and yeah I, even if you do it once every three months is that okay or uh well you bring up a good point you want to be consistent so my number one tip is to get five done first under the belt just five you can launch with three and then every week have one coming out but if you start with five mm -hmm. before you launch you're not stressed out so give yourself a month to prepare you can obviously do it sooner but enjoy the process and then from that, you can just every every day, you know, once a week at the same time, put the podcast out. Mm. And I say start with 20, 25 minutes. And again, talk about what you know and what's going on in the moment. So you don't have to spend like hours upon hours trying to decide. Don't do it scripted. Like absolutely no scripts. <laughs> Yeah, that's hard, <laughs> but it's true. She's right. 
don't do scripts. So we didn't script this. We just said, oh, how about we talk about podcasts? And that was it. Um, wow, this has been really amazing and helpful. It's, it's inspired me. I, I want to do a podcast. Um, you know, I don't know if it'll be about what I'm working on. Um, I, I have this other interest where I feel like I have this friend that has all this great information. I'm like, you need to share this with the world. And, you know, you can't even Google some of the stuff that he knows. There's just not much information. Um, so who knows? Maybe maybe I'll do a, a business esoteric mystical podcast. <laughs> Hey, it sounds interesting to me. I'll listen. Great. Well, everybody, this is Janie Moon. I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction. I think, oh, yeah, the camera thing. Janie Moon is New York City's number one media coach and coaches people with podcasts, YouTube, TV, any kind of speaking. And she's a really good friend of mine. And I also, I just wanted to share all the wealth of knowledge that she has with everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Janie. This is awesome. Wonderful. I I will see you very soon. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.